Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, it is 11 a.m. Central Time, and I am going to go live. Here we are. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie. Let me know where you're coming from. I hope I hope my audio is on. Hopefully it is. Let me know if you can hear me, if everything's okay once you're here. I'm going to show you how I did this little fun uh, pin holder. It's quilted and it's in this hoop frame. And I just think it is such a fun way to display your enamel pins. So hi, hi Connie from the UK. Nice to have you, hope you're well. Um, so let me just, um, what I'm gonna do is a screen share so you can kind of see the process of what I'm doing. I, I posted a speed it up, <laughs> Speed it up. Uh, a fast Instagram uh, movie, whatever you want to call it, yesterday. It's three minutes long and it does show you all the steps. It's just fast. So I wanted to go over it really quick. I tend to have a lot of solid scraps because I work with solids a lot in my quilts and clothes. You may have prints and that'll work fine too. It's just your aesthetic, whatever you're up for. Hi, Kat. Hi, Debbie. Yay. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jill. Uh, so what I wanted to show you is that no matter the size of the scrap, it's usable. I mean, of course, I don't keep like little stringy bits or, you know, anything that's going to make me feel crazy. I just toss that. But these are definitely usable. Even when they're odd shapes, I can use them. Sometimes you'll have you just need a little bit for a corner. And so they're usable, totally usable. I like to get out the scraps and give them a press quick, just so they're easier to work with. You may choose to starch them, totally up to you. So let me get a few of these pressed. As you can see on this one, if you watched that video yesterday, you'll, you'll see that I usually like to build a piece that's at least this big. Well, and it depends on your hoop size. I have hoops that are this big that I thought would be so cute, little four inch hoops. Um, and I have giant 10 inch hoops. I even have an oval one that I use for my pins and it, you can make whatever size you want. Hi, hi Maggie, hi Don. So all you'll need is your scraps, we do want to interface it with some SF 101 or a fusible woven interfacing that's pretty thin. I like SF 101. And then we're going to use some leftover quilt batting. You can also use fusible fleece. In the UK and Australia, I think they call it wadding. Whatever you want to use. I just like to give it that thickness and structure because if you don't use that, your pins will be floppy in the hoop. They won't have, they won't stick in there nice and, uh, nice and firm like this. Okay. And this is great practice. If you've never quilted before, here you go. Small project doable in an hour or two. I think it took me about probably an hour and a half because I don't tend to just sit down and so, so, so I'm interrupted. I have kids, I have stuff, laundry, you know, the works. So I know it couldn't have taken me that long because I did it all yesterday and then loaded that video up <laughs> and my kid got braces. So it's like, it was a full day and I managed it. So I'm just going to give these scraps a little press here. Yay. Oh, Don sewed the star vinyl into a bag and loved it. Yay. I love that stardust vinyl. It's, oh, Oh, not Stardust. You use Star Vinyl. Got it. I have so many different vinyls in there. Sometimes I lose track of the names. But yes, all the vinyls that I sell are sewable and usable for bag makers. Embroidery in the hoop, crafters, and other kinds of crafts. I have quite a few crafts on my YouTube channel that I use the vinyl in. 
uh, if you want to have a look there. Like the other day, I was thinking maybe I needed to do the wall hanging with the pockets because of school. Um, that's a video on my YouTube and uses just one layer of vinyl and you're just sewing clear vinyl to the front and make your pockets super, super easy. So simple. Okay, so now we've got our pile of pressed scraps. Oh, and I am going to change the view here. Let me just allow you to see the desk because I think it's helpful when we have that picture in picture. Let's try it. Bear with me a second. There we go. Yay. Okay, so my scraps are all different sizes and I'm just going to start building them whichever way I don't overthink it. I don't think too much about color placement unless you're going for a specific theme like rainbow and you want to do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, that's fine too. I just like to get going. So I'm going to take this one and this one. And if you're using a print, you place them right sides together and we're going to sew down this edge. So I just have all purpose thread in my sewing machine and I'm using a quarter inch seam, just like with quilting. And you can chain piece these scraps and do like a whole bunch of twosies and then a whole bunch of threesies and, uh, and build them that way. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to press the seam over to the blue because on that yellow, it's really easy to shadow and see the other fabric through the yellow. So I'm going to press that. Oops, you can't even see. I'm going to press that to the blue side. Okay, and then here we go. We're going to do some pink. And I'm just going to lay it like this and sew right down here. So you can see how it's so fun. You don't have to, I don't know, be super disciplined with any, any part of this. So because I like to press my seams right away, I'm just going to trim off the excess blue and flip it over. And then because that's a neon, I am going to press the seam towards the blue. You can decide which way is best for you. And here we are. Now I'm going to take this, uh, let's do orange. I love a good orange. And I'll place it here. And you can see I'm losing a lot of the pink here. Doesn't matter because I can work that in later. So I'm going to sew down this edge. And I'm just going to trim that. If you want to use a, a ruler there to help you trim that away, please do. I've been using rotary cutters for a million years, it feels like. So I'm pretty confident with it. But an acrylic ruler will keep you very safe. Okay, so now I've got this kind of a shape. And I am going to lay my red, I think, like this. I'm just to be easier to work with for me. I'm going to trim some of it excess away, excess away. And now I'm going to sew down that edge. And you just keep doing this over and over and over until you have quite a large piece. And you can see it's a project that is conducive to Netflix and sewing because you're not really following any rules. You're just following your gut instinct. There we go. Trim that away. And then press that seam over. And you could do all parallel lines. You could do just all kind of wacky. I like to add black and white into mine. You might have threads later you need to trim away. Don't, don't pull them out. Trim them. <laughs> Let's add a few more here. I think, I think some aqua. Let me break up this yellow. Sometimes when there's a large piece of color like that, it can pull your eye. So just break it up a little bit. I'm gonna sew right across there. And I'm just using all-purpose Gooderman thread. You can use whatever you like. 
press this back now. How's everybody doing? Is everybody feeling good on this Friday? <laughs> yeah, that's funny, my room. <laughs> I mean, really, I would never make a huge quilt like this unless I had nothing else to do. Um, then maybe I would. But yeah, it can take forever. So like everything, you guys do what you enjoy best. And I do think that's why a small project like this is so fun. Because nobody else in the world is going to have this. And for uh, I did test it out on my teenagers. And they were like, oh. That is kind of cool. I mean, that's a major compliment. <laughs> so it's funny. I told my husband that if I like it, it's a 90% chance a teenager is going to like it. I don't, I don't know if that's a, what that says about my taste, <laughs> but I'm stuck in the teenage years, but Hey, it is what it is. Just going to trim that away and fold it back. Now you can see there are, it will start getting like it can look pretty crazy, but don't lose faith. It's so easily fixable. Right now I could bring in a rotary cutter or I mean a ruler, an acrylic ruler and shape this up, but I want to keep going a few more. I'm going to add a little bit more hot pink in here. So I'm just going to make it, if you can see on the screen here, so that all of the edges of these fabrics are caught. And I'm going to sew right down this edge to catch them all. Now I can see this is way too big, so I'm just going to trim that away now. And you'll get a better feel of that the more you do this kind of stuff. If you're catching all those edges, you're good. And then I'm going to show you how I interface this. And then we'll, I, I am going to show you how I quilt it, which is very beginner. But I love beginner. I love easy because oftentimes simple, beginner, easy projects end up looking smashing at the end because it's all about the finish, right? getting it done, finishing it. If something is so monstrously difficult, there's a good chance I'm not going to follow it through. And then there's nothing to look at, is there? Okay, so I'm going to show you this here on the screen. I just kind of move all my stuff out of the way. I'm not going to throw that away because I'll be able to use that later. And you can see this kind of wonky shape. Let's bring in a ruler and make all the edges easier to manage. You don't have to do this step. If you're using a circular hoop, you could just lay it on your hoop. But I like to work this way. It makes me feel a little bit more, I don't know, in control maybe. I don't want to lose this red stripe. So I'm going to do one more piece so that I can have a straight edge over here. Let's see here. Maybe... I could build a couple of other pieces and then add it to that. And I do, actually, I can just use what I have so that you guys don't have to sit here through this. Sometimes I'll build three or four sections and then combine them together. And that is super fun. That's what I did with this one last night. So let me add this to this guy. Let's just go like this. I like to have the smaller piece on top when I'm sewing it so I know I'm catching everything. And you can pin it if you want. I just wanted you to know it's real free flow. Real beginner friendly. Okay, so I'm gonna swap this over here. And that'll get me some of that black and white in there, which I love. And if you're going to trim like I am here and you're losing a section, just keep it. You can build that on to another project later on. I'm going to do this here. Oops. There it 
is. Let me get this out of the way. And now I've got a bigger section here. And see how this edge has just a teensy bit that needs some filling in to make this perfectly straight across. I can do that really quick. Uh, let me just use this piece and I'll fold it up. Perfect. All right. And I did want to mention for the hoop, because we're using the batting, it's a little thick to get that gold screw through there. So I just take it all the way out and I tie it with like hemp cord or ribbon or anything that can just hold your hoop together. It's secure in there. It's tight. And that's why there's thread there instead of that gold screw. I wish they made those screws a little longer, but they're just, they're just a smidge too short. Okay, so I've got my piece here. And then I'm gonna show you how I interface it. So like bags, just like anything, I put my interfacing down with the bumpy side up. Remove your threads, cause they'll show through if you don't remove those specks. And then I line it up as best I can here. Now, this is kind of a funny workspace. Normally I would do this on my cutting table, just like this, and then either rough cut it around or you can get it pretty close. If you happen to get fusible sticky on your iron, not a big deal. I use cooking oil all the time to clean my iron off. You can buy specialty solution things that you squeeze on there and then rub it off. But I find Wesson cooking oil, like $2.80 in the grocery store, works fine. It will smell like french fries in your sewing room, but it gets all that grub off if you happen to get it on there. So I'm just fusing that sticky side to the wrong side of my fabrics. So all those seams are hidden. Oops. I need an assistant to let me know when I'm off camera. <laughs> it's a lot. Yay. Yes, big stitch quilting would look amazing on this. I was going to sashiko mine and then thought, oh gosh, I don't have time for that. So um, this is a great idea. Do it. All that texture would be so fun. Uh, let's see here. Hi. I will go through these in just a bit. <laughs> yep, that's right. French fries. I love a good French fry. Like it has to be, it can't be mushy. It has to be crispy and just right. So, okay. So we've got this interfaced. And now all your seams have more structure. They're going to sit nice and flat. Everything feels really good here. And like I said, you can frame this for like wall art um, or use it in other kinds of things like bags, my coffee house bag, the cover on that pattern. This is what I did. Exactly this process. But we want to put pins in ours. So I'm going to give it a little more structure with the batting. And I like to give myself some room with the batting, especially when I'm going to be quilting it. Sometimes when you're quilting, things can shift a little bit and I just need some extra room on the ends there because I don't want any of it to not have the batting, if that makes sense. Now, yesterday I did show spraying 505 adhesive. It's this stuff. And you can spray and push it down and it'll hold it in place for you. Now, some people don't want to have spray chemicals or anything in their house. I get it. It's fine. You do you. You can either 
just iron it and pray it doesn't shift too much, especially if you're using a walking foot, it really shouldn't. Or you can pin baste with those quilting safety pins. They have a little bend in them. Or you can uh, large hand baste if you are into that. I'm just not. It's a good method though. It does hold layers in place. Oh, crumb. I forgot my backing. So that's okay. I will use this as my backing and we'll just have a double-sided thing. Improvise. So uh, for the back of this one, I just used a solid, full piece, solid Kona cotton. So you can use whatever you want. You could even, um, you could use fabric you don't like on the back because not a lot of people will see the back side. I mean, unless they look. So it can be a mega stash buster. It's up to you. Okay, I'm just gonna iron that down. Everything, oops, see, I do need to use that 505. I'm just gonna do it. I know somebody's gonna nasty gram me, but it is what it is. I, I like to use what works for me and sometimes, well, there's always more than one way to do something. So I just use a bit. See how it's already grabbing that? Isn't that amazing? That's how good it sticks. And it's not permanent. So if you do it and it's not the, the way you want it, you can still pull it up. I got to get that. Somebody's yelling outside. If I have to answer somebody, we have some people here fixing our bathroom. Okay, it's ready to quilt. So yesterday in the movie, I did not use a walking foot. I'm just using my regular walking foot. I did, however, turn my, uh, my stitch length way up because I wanted a nice chunky stitch. So I'm using a five and then a five. So my settings are five and five. That's like the space between the stitches and then the actual stitch length. And I believe that's millimeters. And I won't do this whole thing, but I do want you to see. Now, I did start in the middle yesterday. And that's what I would recommend. Oh, I love it. It's such a big stitch. I start off the edge of the fabric and then go all the way down. I'm not rulering anything. I'm not worrying about any of that. I just use the width of my foot as a guide. And if I want to come in there and do matchstick quilting, which is when the lines are really, really, really close together, I can. There's space for it. Let me see if you can. You start to see that. And at first I was just turning and going the other direction, but the fabric will push and you can end up with the fabric wanting to fight itself. So my recommendation is just to sew a row, take it out and start from that same side again. And because the piece is not huge, that's not, I don't feel that's too much to ask. So that's just what I do. And I, over and over again, and in a matter of minutes, the whole thing is quilted. So yeah, so you get the picture. You just keep doing that. And the texture that it adds is so cool. I did think about not even doing this hoop and just putting it in a frame. I love that look. I think that is super cool wall art. Um, Oh, here, let's put this up. Carla says there is a powder adhesive that can be used. Um, let us know how that works, Carla. I have not seen that. I've always used 505. It's um, over 10 years now, and it just works for me. But there is a push um, that people, you know, are not lacking sprays more and more. So, all right. Yes, 
It is kind of like Mondrian art, for sure. You're right. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't really... His art, it's funny because he doesn't use many colors, just those primaries. And I'm always like, eh. I, I just need some neon in mine. And then I'm happy. So then you're just going to take your hoop. Let's see. I don't know if I should. I guess I'll cut this and just redo it. I forgot to bring an extra hoop up here. I'm so sorry. But you'll lay this part of the hoop, the one that's not broken, not open, it's just a circle, on your workspace, and you lay this over top. So it's important that all your edges can go over the edge of the hoop plus about a half an inch, because then you'll flip it over. And this is what it'll look like minus your pins. And you'll trim around if you need to. You know, I, at first I trimmed about an inch. That was a little much. So as long as you have enough to fold up and then down inside your hoop here, goodness me. All right. So you want enough to come up the side and then tuck in, but you don't want all this extra, if that makes sense. So about an inch, and then you may need to trim it down to half an inch. And then what you'll do is just take your glue gun and go all the way around your edge, tuck it and hold it, and it will hold. Sorry, got a train going by. And then you will fit this hoop on top. If you want to, you could dab like four points of hot glue on this too. You don't need it though, if you don't want to. And then put your piece of cord through there to hold this together and tie some knots. And there you go, ready to hang. So I'm gonna unplug this iron because it's super hot in here today. It's like 90 degrees outside and I'm sweating. <laughs> so I hope that explained how I did this. I, you take this idea and run with it, make other stuff. Do your bags this way or whatever. No dinner for anyone tonight. I just got to make my quilted pin display. I mean, right? I'm here for that. I always tell the kids on the weekends, you're kind of on your own. Like we have tons of food around. Help yourself. <laughs> if you need help, shout. Otherwise, peace out. <laughs> I think it's fun, don't you, Debbie? And you could use it for other things. It doesn't necessarily have to be enamel pins. Um, I just, I collect pins, so I thought that was fun. Was it the truck that went by? Uh, I think they just took their lunch break. Um, my brain hurts thinking of where the fabric is once I fold it open. So you mean like your seam allowance, Kat? That, that, becomes second nature pretty soon you're not even going to think about that at all what i would say is a lot of times you can just press your seams flat you know just flat open when in doubt pressing to one side the darker of the two fabrics is always correct you, you won't go wrong with that and i say that because i did not know that as a newbie quilter for probably two or three years and i kept seeing the shadowing would use a white background. I mean, duh, why didn't I realize it sooner? Well, you just sometimes you don't. Well, that's why I say that. Love no rules. Me too, me too, me too. Hashtag me too. Life is too short. Yes, I. that's right. I put hers up earlier. You're right, Ruth. Um, let me cycle through here and see if we've got any questions. And it can be questions about other stuff, too. It doesn't have to be about this project. Let's see. Thanks, Clovis. I don't see any questions popping up. That's good. I mean, not good. It's just it is what it is. Um, if you guys don't have hoops, or if you want me to throw some kits together with my solid fabrics, interfacing, batting, 
Let me see what else. I think that would be a kit. Scraps, hoop, interfacing, and batting. Let me know. I'm happy to do it. I have a ton of hoops. I have four inch, six inch, eight and nine and 10 inch hoops, I believe. And some people like to paint their hoops first. You could do spray paint or you could do hand painting. You could get your kids busy and have them paint this while you're doing the actual quilting part. Um, do whatevs. Let me know. Kat says, yes, kits. Okay, I'll get some in there and you can choose your size. Badges, yes. Yes, I remember that. I love that. So it's funny because badges here, I think of patches, you know, like a, yeah, a patch, but that's what I would call a badge. Uh, it's funny how our speak the same language, but certain words are different. My kids, I don't know if you know this, Connie, but we lived in England for seven-ish years, and my eldest went to school there. Well, so did my youngest, but only kindergarten. Um, so when she came here, she was still using a lot of the British vocabulary, and it was so cute, but of course, kids are mean, so she had to stop. But, oh, great idea. That it, Fantastic idea, Carla. How cool. I cannot wait for my pom-poms to come in been waiting what feels like forever. Patience. <laughs> Hopefully soon. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, let me know, as always, if you have any questions and didn't want to ask them here, you can email me, natalie at sohungryhippie.com. And Kat says, add pom-poms to the kit. Yeah, I will when they come in. <laughs> so hopefully that's really soon. Um, good idea. Excellent idea. And thanks for showing up. Feel free to share this with your friends or on social media. You can always tag me. I'm happy to repost your work. Um, I've had a great week on Instagram reposting a ton of work that people have uh, tagged me in or used my hashtags, and then I can find them. It's really hard to find you otherwise. So I'm never bothered. You never, ever bother me. If I don't answer or reply, it just means I didn't see it. And a lot of times with social media, if you get a number of notifications and can't open them, then they just stop for some reason. So it's kind of annoying. But I do try to go in at least every day and check those so I can share you guys because y'all are awesome. <sighs> All right. Well, yay. Thanks. I appreciate you showing up. Thank you so much. I love these lives. They've been a lot of fun for me, so I'm going to keep doing them. Um, this weekend's email, I have another um, announcement for October. So we're having uh, September as like a break time, explore and create. And then October, I've got another sign up if you're interested. I don't know if you all know, but we've been doing Candy Crush so long, and it's been amazing. So fun so fun. So be looking for that this weekend. All right. I'm going to head out and cool down and I will see you guys next Friday and get sewing. Take the weekend, make some stuff. See you soon. Bye.